Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use that same PDF that we analyzed with PPDF in Remnux with PDF Stream Dumper, which is now on the Windows world. And so, you know, it's up to you guys to determine which one you want to use out in the field, but I really feel that it's better to have an understanding of multiple tools. This way then, if you have only one option, you, you, you still know and you know your way around it at least. So we have our, C, our PDF here. CVE 2009-4324. I'm just going to drag and drop that into PDF Stream Dumper. And PDF Stream Dumper is free to download. It's a great tool, um, just like uh, PPDF and Remnux. And uh, there's just so many things it can do. And th I can't even go through all in just one video. So I'm going to just quickly go through uh, this one PDF. But with practice, it comes knowledge, right? So just keep doing this stuff. Anyways. We have our PDF here, and you see down at the bottom, you have some kind of like a, a quick overview of what's going on. So out of the 119 objects that are in this document, we have 11 streams within there, three JavaScripts that it knows of. And now, obviously, if there's obfuscation, um, PDF streamed up or might not catch it. So you always have to take that into account. There's zero pages, one font, zero three U3Ds, zero flash three unknown filters, and one action item. So now, um, and you also see over here are 119 objects. And I don't know if you can tell in the video, but there's different colors. So we have um, black here, and this is blue, and then we have red here. And so now what do those mean? Well, if you go to tools, about list view colors, you can see what the colors mean. So red means headers with the JavaScript tag, and that's 106 was red. And it's saying, yep, here's a header. Uh, for JavaScript going to with a reference to 107. Uh, blue is an object stream, so those there should be 11 streams here that are blue. Uh, green headers, launch action, open action. Once again, these are things that you, so you can quickly focus on, um, especially when you have 119 objects, kind of quickly focus on the ones that might be of interest to you. Another way to kind of narrow things down is to go to tools, options and there's two that I normally click on. The nice thing about PDF Stream Dumper is that it remembers uh, the, the settings that you set from the time before. So if you select this, close the program and open back up again, it'll actually remember that you selected this. So something to keep in mind. If you want to see everything, you have to make sure to uncheck these things. So we're going to hide the header only object. So we see here that 106 <clears throat> is actually there's nothing in it. It's just a, it's just a header, right? So if we go and say hide header only objects, 106 should now disappear. And it did. Actually hit 108 header only files. So that really helps us when we're trying to quickly find badness, right? It's just trying to weed out the, the low hanging fruits. We can focus on the good stuff. And there's another one here called hide duplicate streams, which is good, right? We don't want to see double of everything. We might have to look at everything twice. And that got rid of two duplicates. So now we're down to, to nine from 119, I think. So that's really great, right? So let's just take a look. That's definitely, well, we know from, from the first one what it was. That's, that looks like some interesting stuff. Now let's go to here. So here is our, our stream. And inside is what looks to be not so good, right? And we also have some decompression errors from the other stream. So sometimes, you know, when you're running PPDF, you have to force it to open. Um, these would kind of be some of the errors that you would get if you have to force it in PPDF. So, okay, we have we found our badness. Now let's see what we can do with it. So let's hop over to our job. Well, let's try an exploit scan. And it says, oh, um, might be hidden through obfuscation, but we can't find anything. Very cool. So let's jump into the JavaScript UI. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> I, I always forget to do this, so I keep on reminding myself, is I'm going to hit the script and send it to the clipboard, okay? This way, then, I can rename, I can remove, you see here. So I'm just going to call it unmodified. This way, then, if I, you know, accidentally just delete, you know, all this, it's like, oh, no, where'd all my data go? You can just double-click, and it'll drop you back to that last save point. So just think of it like a save point. So... You know, with anything, you always want to save early and save often, right? Because you never know when something's going to crash. But unfortunately, if the program crashes, you are going to lose this. But anyways, so we have some information here. And now, you know, with PDF, we, we did some things in order to try and see uh, the shell code. 
Now with PDF Stream Dumper, it, I feel like it's, it, it's very, very easy. We're going to use um, an, something that's inherent into PDF Stream Dumper called a Toolbox, or t yeah, Toolbox, which is and TB for short. So we see here we have a, this eval S2. So basically, it's saying for i equals zero, so this is just a loop here, right, where the length of whatever this is, so for this entire thing, you're going to take from the car code and you are going to run it by a key. Well, K, when the key happens to be up here. And the attackers or someone decide to nicely put the comments in of what to do. So that's pretty nice. So we could do all this by hand if we really wanted to. But, you know, the whole point of JavaScript and things is to make life easier, right? So why not let the script run, but just, you know, say, well, what does this actually come out to? So we have this eval S2. That's what this does, right? Well, what we can do is we do toolbar, toolbox, dot and this basically it's like you know how in excel you can do this you do the dot or whatever and it'll show you what options you have so we already have an eval it's probably what we can do we can also use t which will just put the output to here as well you can also do unescape there's a bunch of different options here and i highly recommend going to the website to, to look and see the different things you can do with these options but we're just going to do tv dot eval and we're going to hit run basically it did all this and it output the results down here so now what we're going to do is I'm going to again save that to the clipboard and I'm going to rename that as unobfuscated, probably spelled that wrong. And then I'm going to move this up to the script pane up here. See this? Very cool. So this looks like a no-op sled. Uh, this looks like the shell code. And you're adding the no-op sled to the shell code and then you're doing something, right? Very cool. Now, if we do our exploit scan, we suddenly have, of course, we knew it was 2009-4324 because it was nicely labeled that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, <clears throat> once again, now we say other exploits may be hidden, but we see right here, this is the exploit. But we needed to, you know, do some deobfuscation in order for PDF stream number to actually recognize that, right? Because it was obfuscated before. Cool. So let's quickly look at this uh, shell code. So now we go to uh, shellcode analysis, and I'm going to use sclog. So now we kind of see, again, what we saw in uh, PPDF, right? We saw, we see these strings, and then at the bottom, we see the C program files, Kaspersky lab. So we see it looking for these files again, right? And we see this Adobe update.exe. So now... There's a couple things I want to point out here. There's a lot of different options here, and I definitely suggest again to look at the videos and look look online to, to you know to understand what all of them are doing. But the the main one you want to the couple you want to look at here is no safety net. So if you actually wanted to let the malware run in its entirety and see what it's going to do, you would check this. Um, if you keep it unchecked, what it'll do is it will not allow any new um, files to be executed. So if it does create an exe or creates a DLL and tries to run it, it actually will block it from being run. So for safety's sake, we're gonna keep that on because that's just kind of nice. We just wanna see what will happen. But if it does create a new file, it will actually create it. You can actually navigate to it as you'll see later. You, we can actually navigate to it and then do analysis on the file afterwards. Um, but you know, it's just an option of what you can do. Allow any DLL to load. Again, it's trying to say, Hey, if you just want it to, if it creates a DLL, it will allow it to load. Are you going to, you know, only allow certain operating system ones to load? Um, pretty interesting stuff. You can also take a memory dump, depending on what you're doing. Uh, there's another one I always check is to open file because sometimes when the shell code, it's actually looking for additional malicious files that are embedded in the PDF and it needs to have the file open, right? So that it can go get the memory address location and then extract it from there. So I always generally have that open. Else, you'll hit launch. It'll be trying to get the file size, get the file size, and it's just going to hang there pretty much. Another one is, which is good is log file. This way, it just saves basically the output that you're going to see on the screen into a log, so then you have it for later. So, okay, now let's see if this works. Hit launch. Yes. So we see here, it's, it's opening up the PDF, and it's loading the shell code into memory and it's executing the buffer. And so here, the first thing we see, it's doing the first API call, finding the first file. So it's saying, hey, do I see this file? And then if it does find it, maybe it'll stop. Now, once again, now 2009 was pretty, is pretty old in this day and age, right? <laughs> 
gosh, I'm so old. But back when this, P, this exploit came out, this was the latest stuff, right? This, this exploit came out in 2009. So it was looking for the latest and greatest back when it came out. All right, so it didn't find it, so it started to run. So it's trying to see, you see here, it's getting the file size. And it's saying, okay, I found it. Let's go get the temp path, which is a temp. Now it's creating a file, uh, temp Adobe update.exe, which we kind of saw here, right? Adobe update.exe. And then it's writing to the file, fair enough. And now, but then you see it's trying to execute it. So, but since we had this no safety net checked off, uh, we, we were not allowing it to execute, but if we had it checked, it would execute Adobe update and we'd see more information. So let's quickly go to that lo oops, let's quickly go to that location. E and settings. I'm sorry if you guys can hear the helicopter, the Olympics are going on, and since I live really close to London Bridge, uh, it is just madness. So here we see Adobe update.exe, right? So there's our file. So now we could do additional analysis, static or dynamic with this file, right? Or we could even do just a simple uh, strings. Take a look, there's an MD5 hash, you know, put that up in virus total. I'm sure it's been seen before. And so now, now the log, where did it save the log to? Saved it to the desktop. So let's quickly just check at the desktop here. There it is. So again, so this is basically just what this was, but just in an easier format that you can, you know, put into your reports and things like that. So that's uh, PDF Stream Dumper. It's a great tool. I highly suggest you play around with it. Uh, the toolbox itself is very, very useful when you have more complicated JavaScript. You have to do multiple things, multiple um, uh, substitutions in order to, to get to the final answer. Uh, maybe in another video, I'll, I'll show an example of that. But uh, this was the same PDF that we looked at at PDF. Now in just the Windows P PDF Stream Dumper. Hope you guys enjoy. Cheers.